Did you know research has shown that people over age 35 lose more teeth to periodontal disease than to caries? Well, the good part is that early diagnosis can help prevent this. In fact, early stages of gingivitis, which is the inflammation of gingiva, is even reversible, meaning if we treat it, we can get the gingiva back to the healthy state. Before diving into the disease, let us understand the basic anatomy of the periodontium. Peri means around and odont means tooth and therefore periodontium encompasses four different soft tissues and hard tissues gingiva periodontal ligament alveolar process and the cementum by definition the tissues investing and supporting the teeth are defined as the periodontium the gingiva is the investing tissue and the rest are the supporting or attachment tissues each of these four tissues can be further differentiated in terms of structure function and localization Understanding this dynamic network of tissues is pivotal for the performance of many procedures related to periodontal therapy. Let us first focus on the most peripheral component of the periodontium, the gingiva. If you can recall, the oral mucosa was classified as masticatory mucosa, lining mucosa and specialized mucosa. Hard palate and gingiva are examples of masticatory mucosa. By definition, Gingiva is the part of the oral mucosa that covers the alveolar processes of the jaw and surrounds the necks of the teeth in a collar-like fashion. Anatomically, gingiva can be divided into three parts: free or marginal gingiva, attached gingiva, and the interdental papilla. This portion of the gingiva is not directly attached to the tooth and therefore is called the free or unattached or the marginal gingiva. The attached gingiva is tightly bound to the tooth and the underlying periosteum of the bone by epithelium and the connective tissue. Interdental papilla from the name itself is the gingiva that fills the interproximal space between the adjacent teeth and it's usually triangular in shape. Let us now recall a few basic terms. Firstly, do you remember the gingival sulcus? It is the V-shaped space between the tooth and the marginal gingiva. It is bordered by the sulcular epithelium on one end, the tooth on the opposite side, and the coronal end of the junctional epithelium at its most apical end. Junctional epithelium, what's that? It is that part of the gingival epithelium that attaches the marginal gingiva to the tooth surface. And as you can see, it forms a junction between the tooth and the gingiva. Hence, it's called as the junctional epithelium. The junctional epithelium assumes a key role in maintenance of periodontal health. It produces the epithelial attachment and therefore creates a firm connection of soft tissue to the tooth surface. It is quite permeable and thus serves as a pathway for diffusion of metabolic products of the plaque bacteria like toxins, chemotactic agents and antigens. There is also diffusion in the opposite direction of host defense substances like serum exudates, antibodies, etc. Now that we are clear with the basics, let me throw some quick facts. Let's see if you can understand it. Marginal gingiva, also called as the free gingiva, is the portion of the gingiva surrounding the neck of the tooth that forms the soft tissue wall of the gingival sulcus. Understood? After complete tooth eruption, the free gingival margin is located on the enamel surface approximately 1.5 to 2 mm coronal to the cemento enamel junction that is the CEJ. And that's exactly why CEJ is not visible clinically in a healthy gingiva. It is demarcated from the attached gingiva by the free gingival groove. It corresponds with the coronal margin of the junctional epithelium, which is basically the bottom of the sulcus. A probing depth of 1 to 3 mm is usually considered compatible with gingival health. Thus, up to 3 mm sulcus depth is considered normal in a clinical scenario. This was all about the marginal gingiva. Let us now move on to understand the attached gingiva. Remember how the free gingival groove separated the free gingiva from the attached gingiva? Similarly, we have the mucogingival junction that demarcates the attached gingiva and the alveolar mucosa. So the attached gingiva extends from the free gingival groove to the mucogingival junction. It is continuous with the marginal gingiva. You already know that the attached gingiva is firm, resilient and tightly bound to the periosteum. In healthy condition, it presents with a coral pink color. A morphological characteristic of attached gingiva is the presence of stippling or orange peel appearance. It usually corresponds to small epithelial ridges and it's developed in areas of high keratinization. When the attached gingiva is inflamed, it loses its superficial stippling and the color turns into dark red. 
The width of the attached gingiva varies in different regions of the mouth. Facially, attached gingiva is the widest in the maxillary and the mandibular incisor region. 3.5 to 4.5 mm in the maxillary and 3.3 to 3.9 mm in the mandibular. It is narrower in the region of the first premolar, 1.9 mm in the maxillary and 1.8 mm in the mandibular area. Palatally, the attached gingiva merges imperceptibly with equally firm and resilient palatal mucosa with no visible mucogingival line. It's entirely opposite scenario for the lingual area. The lingual gingiva is narrow in the incisor region and wide in the molar region. It is also important to note that the width of the attached gingiva increases with the age and active eruption of the teeth. The attached gingiva has some important functions. It braces the marginal gingiva, prevents apical spread of inflammation from the marginal gingiva to the deeper periodontium, allows for proper deflection of food, provides room for proper placement of toothbrush, has an aesthetic value and is critical for overall maintenance of gingival health. As we have seen, the mucogingival junction demarcates the light pink firmly bound attached gingiva from the dark red movable alveolar mucosa. Let's brush through some differences between the attached gingiva and the alveolar mucosa. Histologically, we observe that the attached gingiva is keratinized, has distinct red apex and a thick lamina propria with a few elastic fibers. On the other hand, the alveolar mucosa is non-keratinized, has indistinct red apex with a thin lamina propria with numerous elastic fibers. The attached gingiva is stippled while stippling is absent in the alveolar mucosa. In a healthy mouth, as we have already observed, the free gingival margin courses parallel to the cemento enamel junction. The interdental papilla is the gingiva that fills the interproximal space just apical to the contact area. When viewed in the labiolingual section, the gingiva assumes a concave form. This is termed as col. It's basically a valley-like depression that connects the facial and the lingual papilla, and it's not visible clinically. The col is a non-keratinized, therefore it's more prone to infection. That's why usually it is said that gingivitis starts in the interproximal area. As we all know, dental implants has become a routine procedure in dental practice these days. The attached gingiva is needed for sound periodontal health even in the case of implants. There are some similarities and differences between natural dentition and implants. Similar to the supracrystal attached tissues in the natural dentition, implants also present in their most coronal portion with sulcular epithelium, junctional epithelium and the connective tissue. This is one of the similarities. We will study the others in the subsequent videos as we study the normal structure of the periodontium. Before you get started with another topic, let's quickly revise using mind map. The normal periodontium consists of gingiva, periodontal ligament, cementum and the alveolar bone. The gingiva is the part of the oral mucosa that covers the alveolar process of the jaw, surrounds the neck of the teeth in a collar-like fashion. It's classified as the free gingiva, attached gingiva and the interdental papilla. The free gingiva is not attached to the tooth, forms the soft tissue wall of the gingival sulcus. Its margin is 1.5 to 2 mm coronal to the CEJ. Normal probing depth is 1 to 3 mm and it's demarcated from the attached gingiva by the free gingival group. The attached gingiva is tightly bound to the periosteum and it's coral pink in color and shows stippling. It has six functions as described here. The interdental papilla fills the interproximal space between the adjacent teeth and it's triangular in shape. A valley-shaped depression called col is present that connects the facial and the lingual papilla. It's not visible clinically, it's non-keratinized and therefore more prone to inflammation. If you want access for more mind maps for free, log into our website and mobile app through these QR codes and links in the description box and enjoy revising. We have also attached notes and short quiz for you to attempt. Let us know how much you scored in the comment section. We'll also be organizing giveaways for students who consistently score well in our quizzes. So stay tuned on our Instagram page for the same. If you stuck with me till now, I'm sure you enjoy the video. Please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. It makes up for all the time and effort we put in to make concepts so simple and easy for you. Before you dive into the next video, please do watch the amazing video on microscopic features of oral epithelium.